Hi and good afternoon from Market in Finland. My name is Reetta Karjalainen and we have a pleasure to start the webinar called Top Skills for Marketing in 2023. And our speaker this afternoon is Maria Kratzevska Olkonen and she comes from my speaker. Warm welcome, Maria. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> And in this webinar, we are going to uh, go through the topics like what are the most important skills for marketers, marketers to learn in 2023. And this is based on a study interviewing over 50 marketers. And uh, it has there has been a based, uh, based data that has been collected from the Nordics. And now we are going to hear the results. This is going to be very interesting. And uh, as usual, we are making a recording about this webinar and the audience is warmly welcome to ask questions from Maria by writing them down to the questions panel. But uh, I give it the floor to you, Maria. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Reta, and thank you for having me. This is absolutely exciting uh, topic for me. So uh, I'm very happy to, to hold the session on the top skills for uh, for marketing for 2023 but actually i can already tell you that those skills and those insights will be relevant also beyond the this this year uh, thank you Reta, for for introduction so indeed my name is maria krajewska olkonen and i am the ceo and partner at the company called uh, my speaker growth and you know guys my goal for the session today actually it's first of all yes indeed share with you some insights from our nine months long research done uh, across organizations in finland and in the nordics but also what is more important is to give you a concrete tools frameworks and ideas on how you can succeed in keeping up with this technological advancements with this speed of change to make sure that you know you can actually succeed in your work regardless of what skills are coming up all the time as new ones so um just briefly agenda for today uh, i will cover four topics i will actually start with you know with why why this is important why do we actually talk about it today about the skills and uh, why this is relevant then i will share the insights from our uh, from our research and then also i will give you some concrete uh, ideas how you can measure uh, you know where you are with certain skills how you can evaluate which skills are relevant for you which are skills are important for you and uh, you know we will also share with you some strategies uh, for growth and you know how to build continuous learning culture for both like yourself personally but in case you are leading the teams how to build it for your for your organization and uh, and the company so let's Start. And indeed, uh, we will share the. I will tell you how to get the slides later, later on in the end of the, in the on, uh, end of my presentation. By the way, faster your seatbelts. I have 70 slides, so that's quite a lot. Again, there should be room for asking questions, and I'm very happy to connect with you afterwards. Again, topic that I'm super um, excited and fascinated about. Because this is exactly the big why. First of all, why do I talk about the topic? Why, um, why I'm discussing it today? Uh, so first of all we at my speaker grow this is actually what we do we uh, evaluate we all the time analyze what are the skills needed to succeed in modern uh, modern world right what are the strategies what are the tactics that modern organizations who are succeeding not only globally i will be talking about like known cases but you know those apply those same rules apply for also smaller close to us organizations so what are actually the tactics and tools which those organizations um apply and then we teach those uh, tactics strategies and tools to organizations in finland in nordics across europe and um, to make sure that the companies actually succeed and, and and they get actually very actionable tools from us and uh, we talk today about um uh, you know growth marketing uh, marketing skills but you know our portfolio is actually much la much larger so we talk about leadership we talk about communication we talk about sales so there's quite the wide range of, of tools and the strategies that we at my my speaker 
uh, growth are discussing. And one in interesting part, actually, which I want to maybe uh, start with, that those tactics, those tools, those ideas, they are relevant for really different types of organizations. We work with the global companies. We, all, we work with startups. Uh, you know, it's all about the mindset and really understanding how those uh, skills, those tactics and capabilities, how they can help you in, in succeeding. So there is no actually difference, so much difference between uh, between you know the company who is global or company who is smaller. The, the mindset remains the same and the tactics are very similar. So that's kind of like an intro why we at my speaker growth talk about it. Then on the smaller maybe uh, narrowing um, narrowing the topic and, and why why this topic is important and, and, and relevant to us as professionals uh, is that we strongly believe in uh, um, in in actually uh, what in the teaching of one of the uh, organizational learning guru uh, Peter uh, Peter Sange, who actually said in his famous book already uh, you know uh, published many years ago the fifth discipline and uh, that um, the only sustainable competitive advantage of organizations is how quickly they can learn the faster they learn the more competitive advantage they 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 remain right so uh, this is something that it's interesting because you know this this um, publication took place quite many years ago and i would argue that you know it's more relevant uh, than ever actually more relevant than today as the speed of learning the requirements to learn is so important uh, right now one step further actually because uh, peter senger rely, you know reflects to, to our, or he talks about organizations uh, how we actually discuss with the teams we are working that this top this this team is is very um it's very applicable for to us as professionals so you know to remain nowadays uh, um competitive on the job market it's exactly the same principle we need to allocate time for understanding what skills are are, are out there what kind of capabilities we need to poss uh, possess what kind of adjustment we need to make all the time because guys this is also one of the insights that this is continuous this this won't end this is basically con um, the, the the learning is a is a is a journey that won't end till the end of the you know our careers but basically allocating the time uh, for, for that is, is quite crucial and uh, it's exactly one of the reasons for us remaining competitive in the market. And, and at this stage, I would like to already congratulate you to allocating time and spending time on this, on this webinar because that's exactly the sign that you are definitely putting the, you know, you are thinking about the skills as one of the most relevant things for you, which is, which is quite important and already uh, showing that, you know, you are, you, are, you are really investing your energy and time into this, into this topic. And then itself, uh, reskilling, upskilling, and keeping up with the uh, with the with the skills development is not a new topic. Uh, there's a lot of global initiatives, a lot of big organizations. They are deploying like really massive programs. But just to give you example, uh, in 2020, World Economic Forum they launched an initiative called Reskilling Revolution, and that's uh, that. This is basically just showcasing that this is a matter of governments, large organizations. Uh, the challenge with matching the skills of the organizations with the requirements of you know technological advancements automation now ai as well you know it's rapidly changing so it's 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 changing so rapidly that you know there they are really strategies needed for keeping up with the with the speed so uh, as an example um you know world economic forum exactly showcasing that Within seven years, so by 2030, we will have to upskill or reskill actually one billion people. That means that you know those people will have to change absolutely the uh, list of their skills to adjust to the new environment. There will be skills, there will be uh, jobs that will totally disappear. There will be totally new jobs that will show uh, show up uh, on the on the marketplace. So basically, that's actually a very huge initiative that it's that needs some attention and and. Um, uh, and um, uh, you know it's quite urgent and already in the shorter uh, terms 42 percent of jobs will actually change significantly within this year and we can actually see it in the q1 you know how the ai changed many of the jobs and how the topic is show showcasing that we have to adjust very very quickly and something that we see as well as something relevant for our um, uh, research is that uh, interpersonal skills are definitely uh, being more and more in demand so that's kind of like 
global um, global topics or, or global trends. Uh, and, and just just to showcase you as well that um, you know right now is quite fast, but it's already the slowest speed of, of, of development that we will experience during our life because it's right now uh, it's quite fast, but it's still going to be much faster as of tomorrow. So coming to the you know very kind of big pictures why this topic is important and how organizations or you know governments are looking at the challenge of really reskilling the workforce in the upcoming years uh, i would like to zoom zoom in to the one very relevant question for all of us and this question is am i still relevant and this is why we actually did this research of the skills of the future because when I think about like how I navigate my career, for example, coaching and training industry is definitely changing with, because of the AI, because of new tools. So we all the time have to think, are we still relevant as an example to our customers? Are we offering the good value? Are we able to really help our organizations? Am I relevant as a, as a leader in the modern world? How I can actually navigate in this changing environment? So I definitely, um, uh, encourage you to ask this question on the regular basis uh, yourself and your team if, if your team if you are leading uh, if you are leading your teams in the organization um, as, as something quite, uh, quite quite a good question to have in your toolbox in general when you think about your career so that's a big why why we do the the research and why we are talking now uh, today about the skills of the future as the organization so when we now zoom in to our report, so the main topic of today, what are the skills of the future? Uh, what is the what is actually the outcome, the insights for from from our um, almost one year one year long uh, um, research? First of all, we discussed with almost 100 uh, for uh, over 140 organizations. We combine qualitative with uh, quantitative um, research. We discuss with really different levels of marketing leadership in different organizations in Finland and in the Nordics. And we were able to identify 20 marketing skills which are definitely uh, in high demand as of today and which are invested in in the perspective of the next months. And here I would like to maybe start with the you know top three. So when we think about the skills, now the number three skill that you know we identified as the most urgent is actually data analysis. So data analysis is a definitely a tool needed or it's quite essential skill for modern marketing right we have to make a data driven decision making right we we actually have to you know have the the skill the, the knowledge of the skills how to analyze data we have plenty of customers when we know that companies deployed huge programs to gathering data but this data is sitting somewhere because business units they are not able to actually extrapolate you know information that is useful for the business it, it, it's relevant for marketing it's relevant for actually for sales for customer experience so it's a common pro, uh, problem nowadays that's uh, that's why if you don't have yet the data uh, analysis in your toolbox i would definitely uh, encourage you to invest time in learning more about different tools knowledge about the statistics data visual visualization and so on then when we think go a bit further uh, creative thinking is the second uh, second skills that different levels of marketing um, professionals are identifying identifying as crucial by creative thinking we are actually referring to different like, certain approach in marketing uh, that we um, that we approach problems or challenges with innovative uh, innovative um, and original approach right so um, those that can be about the different challenges but also new ideas generating new ideas with you know imagination curiosity and thinking outside of the box and this again um, it's something that needs to be supported by the organization. So certain elements, like for example, psychological safety needs to be in place in, in the organizations to actually enable creative thinking within the, within the marketing teams and with mar within marketing professionals. So that's the number two most uh, in popular or, or, or in-demand skill among the marketing. And when we think about number one, so, so the, the skill that showed up in most all of our conversation is actually growth hacking skills. 
by growth hacking, we understand all the marketing techniques that you know focus on the rapid experimentation and data-driven strategies, or and identifying the you know in a very effective way what works and what doesn't work for your customers for for the organization. And guys, there's no better way. We actually cannot make, or I would not recommend making any big decisions based on assumptions. The best way, and I will showcase this, the best, the the, the most successful organizations, they base all the decision, all the decisions they made um, based on exactly trying and learning, and they systemize that. So. Um, um, rapid experimentation is the key skill. Again, it's something that it's possible to learn, and it's it, it's probably many of you already have this skill. It's just like showcasing here that it's quite important to possess in your toolbox. So those are the top three skills. So that's a very very brief summary of our of our insights. Then if we will move a bit you know further and a bit deeper, so we actually divided the set of skills and the skills that we identified into two groups and you most likely know this division into the soft skills and the hard skills i find it very useful because first of all those two approaches they require the different uh, different kind of uh, um, strategies first of all soft skills are very very important as i know as i mentioned before there's more and more demand and focus on the soft skills and from those top three creative thinking is definitely a soft skill but then hard skills, those are the skills that you can actually, you know, learn the concrete processes, concrete concrete tools. You can get a lot of, uh, actually, especially nowadays, tools uh, off shelf that they can support, you know, ex exceeding in this area. So um, we also divide those into those, those two areas because actually soft skills, we call it in slow skills. Um, this is what I mentioned about the different strategies, uh, because you actually need a bit more time to excel in the soft skills. So if you are defining that you are a bit lacking the, in this area, uh, or you would like to improve in this area, definitely uh, please plan a bit more time than, than, for example, investing in learning about the hard skills. So uh, we call the hard skill actually hard skills, uh, fast skills. And by the way, more and more a definition of soft, soft skills is actually soft skills are referred to as a power skills because you know there's already identified um, you know studies actually showing that actually the soft skills will get you further in your uh, in your career. So for example, we have other skills that we identified like a cooperation skill so so teamwork also storytelling in marketing especially more and more um uh, you know valuable skill to add in your toolbox but then on the hard skills we also of course have also user experience design so really be a customer centric and user friendly in whatever in whatever we do so those are top six skills that we identified so we go we go a bit further uh, and again this division as i said will allow you to really planning more ahead because planning is also a key when it, com when it comes to really adjusting or, or, or you know, learning new skills. Then, um, when we think about those skills, the set of skills that I just mentioned, you know, what we also uh, discovered that different organizational levels, so different management teams, um, they identify different set of skills as the crucial one. So, for example, for C-suit, for, for example, for top management, definitely growth hacking and creative thinking and company strategy alignment is quite important. So, again, it depends on your function in the organization, which skills you're going to, you know, you're going to consider as more uh, more important. When it comes to the middle management, so those are those are leaders who have on their job all the responsibility translating the big strategy into the very hands-on and practical um, practical solutions, hands-on. So those, uh, for example, skills they consider as the most important, starting with cooperation, so teamwork, for example, uh, but also of course growth hacking, as this is one of the key skills that we are identifying, and also adapt uh, uh, ability to adapt very very quickly. But when we think about the specialists, so actually hands-on teams who are executing marketing strategies, so definitely cooperation skills, growth hacking, and um, and um, you know creative thinking is something that they identify. So those are you know the reason I'm showing this is to show you that sometimes uh, there is no like one set of skills. Uh, relevant for the whole organization. It might be really dependent on the function, on the role, and on the place in the strategy, 
in the in the company but still good to understand for example what skills are important for management in 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 certain center organizations and what are important for which are important for the teams then Another very important part, guys, is it's something that, of course, it's natural that we want to grow and develop as, as you know, individuals. But sometimes it's quite challenging because our calendars are super packed. Uh, we don't have actually time and learning strategy is not always supported by the organization. So actually, when we think about the, you know, when we ask the question, like, who is responsible for actually development on the skill of the skills and assessment of the skills? You know, the, for team leaders or the, the top management, they actually identified that it should be on the responsibility of the team leads, right? The team leaders should actually have it on their agenda to make sure that the, the, the teams have their right skills in place. It's actually the same for the team management, for the, for the middle management. But when we discuss with actually hands-on marketeers, people who are executing, they actually see that skills development is very often actually in their hands. So they, because they are hands-on, they have a better understanding for you know what kind of skills they need immediately. So this is a hint here. Uh, the successful deployment of the updating the skills matching with the strategy it has to be um, it has to be actually uh, navigated from both sides it has to align with the strategy uh, and it has to be supported so the teams need to be motivated to actually and understand that they need some certain skills needed for uh, ex exceeding or excelling in the in the roles and this is actually exactly what we at, at, at my speaker grow to do. We actually, first of all, you know, learning is fun. It, it should be fun. It should be energizing. It should be interesting. It should resonate, but should, it should be always be aligned with the strategy. So there is no good, you know, one way only, you know, only from, you know, one side to learning should always support the big strategy. And that's kind of like the best, the best, uh, you know, recipe for success when it comes to designing programs for a competence development in the organization. And I also promised you some concrete tools. So here is the tool number one. Uh, this is so-called T-shaped market here. Um, um, you know, I would say you know um, canvas. Uh, so so um, this is a very common and quite known, and I'm I'm, I'm pretty sure many of you already heard about it. Um, you know, frameworks that will allow you to you know excel in the modern world of marketing. Meaning that of course it's good that you have uh, expertise in one of two areas. So this is like in depth, having like really in-depth understanding. This is your specialization. This is your uh, area of, of, of expertise. But nowadays, actually, you need to understand so many other uh, small skills or have a capabilities on different spectrum, depending on your industry or your organization, that it's really good to allocate time actually to have a you know empty canvas like this and, and just feel what are the skills that might be useful for you that you don't have to really understand like you know in in depth but you should definitely have the possibility to have some overall understanding or you know what kind of questions to ask ask what kind of tools actually use you can outsource many things but at least having somehow good understanding of different areas uh, so so definitely a good tool to have and then also you know uh, just uh, you know there's a lot of text but just wanted to on the big picture there are certain strategies that you can um, you know identify identify the skill gaps in your teams if you are leading the teams so of course you can definitely have a good job analysis you can have like a regular performance review when you exactly feel this you know gaps in the matrix what skills do you need you can definitely look at the employee feedback uh, for your for your for your teams you can look at the skills assessment and um, and then you can also look at the industry standards or for example reports like ours what are the skills out there that might might be interesting what kind of like uh, are in the scope organizations are using so so you can just map like do you actually have those skills in the team and again we are as the my speaker growth we are helping but also there's a lot of you know tools out there which you can just go uh, as an example i just put those kind of like totally found them during some of the research and sometimes we call just kind of suggest to our customers you know just go and see what kind of tools you can use plenty of those nowadays so again quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of possibilities to assess like what skills do you need, but also what is your level, uh, you know, in those skills. So it really helps in planning both time allocation and, and finances, because to be honest, there's so much nowadays free uh, resources out there. You can just really spend time. You just need this time. And actually in the next part, I will show you how to allocate and how to find time for learning. And, and also if you are interested, 
I will show in the end how you can get more comprehensive, like in-depth uh, review of the skills that we are uh, that we are that we identified. Again, a lot of data there, so we did, didn't want to burden you with you know a lot of numbers. Uh, but the main point is that we identify those uh, those um, eight actually uh, skills that definitely we uh, encourage you to look into. And then if you are interested in like more in-depth. Uh, analysis of the skills, then definitely in the end there will be a way to to get to get the, the report. So that's kind of like first part. So there are actually we know that they are skills that definitely successful organizations are already investing in, and that's not usually the problem, guys, because you know investing in the skills in many organizations who are especially you know they have already internal programs or they have funds for you know very sophisticated um you know um, you know skills development practices this is already there you know it may be good to know like what kind of skills out there but then uh, what i would like to uh, what i would like to you know discuss more is to show you like how you as individual or team leader how you can um, you know facilitate the time for learning and how to keep up with the skills development with the tools that you can use uh, straight on from today or or from tomorrow and usually we start to actually, you know, this part, I uh, like to start this part from a quote from a legendary uh, manager, management consultant called um, Peter Drucker, strategy consultant, who actually said that, you know, every business, and it doesn't matter in which kind of industry you are and how big you are, if it's like you have 100,000 euros revenue or you have uh, 1 million or 10, 10 million or 100 million, basically as a business, you have, uh, as an organization, you have two functions. First function is innovation, which basically means you know you add value to customers. You all the time innovate how to add value to the certain segment, right? And then the function of marketing and also sales comes in this one. Uh, basically, how you can scale this innovation, right? How you can you know really focus on today uh, today's solutions that you know like you can you can you can ship those, those innovations and help more organizations or more customers in the in the in the in the future so i'm just saying that marketing especially today when part of innovation and changing you know also the landscape of your most likely organization is changing marketing has a very very crucial um, role of growth that's why i'm not very surprised that many of the skills that we identified uh, those eight skills that we have here they actually support both innovation and exactly you know uh, ways of improving market marketing so we can actually you know work smarter not only harder so that's also something very important for us organization we are very you know the scarcity of time is one of the biggest challenges for organizations that we work so how you can make sure that you have a good culture good organization that you can start thinking outside of the box you can use you know data for uh, for making the data driven decisions and how to have like a process for scaling and growing your um, your your organization and this kind of experimenting and learning and scaling is something that it actually comes together very very um, very often in pretty much all the conversations we have with our customers we always quote or we like to quote um, uh, jeff bezos who said that actually their success at amazon is the actually the result of how many experiments they run per week, per day, per month, and per year. Because this is actually, uh, again, growth growth strategies. And uh, one of the most important skills of growth hacking is pretty much just having a structure of running in the right in the right manner, having a right process of running experiments, and then all the time learning what works and what doesn't work for your customer, and having this ability to quickly adjust, navigate, and to, um, and to um, pivot. And the companies who are actually doing it very right, they have a couple of components that they put together. And this is also something that, you know, I would highly advise you to put as a strategy for both, you know, as the organization to, to run in the organizations to have this, um, you know, culture of continuous learning and, and tapping, into, tapping into right skills, but also for you as a professional, you know, applying those strategies for your personal development of skills. And the first component is actually a time and, and prioritization, right prioritization, and then having a critical thinking way where you have to allocate your time. Um, there is a study saying that you know to keep up with uh, the with the modern development of the of the technological advancements, we should be spending between 
three to five hours every week on the deliberate training, deliberate and learning. Deliberate learning actually means that you are sitting, not on the job, not learning on the job, but you are sitting and learning something that you have a skill. Like it's, it's a kind of like, I would say, more hardcore study. And uh, unfortunately, this is a dream for many, uh, as on average, there's about 20 minutes where professionals actually allocating nowadays, nowadays time for learning. So there is definitely not lack of will. The will is there. People want to learn and develop, obviously, but it's definitely a lack of time. So in the next couple of slides, I will show you a couple of strategies which you can use to actually make sure that you, know, you will find the time for learning and development. First um, a quote that I usually want to show is, you know, show me your calendar and I will show you your, your, uh, your priorities, right? So I can say that, you know, it's a pretty safe bet uh, to have an assumption that you, your work uh, as in, you know, in marketing is pretty busy, that, you know, nowadays we are super, you know, packed with one, like, you know, back-to-back -back meetings, uh, not really a lot of time for ideation or for actually a lot of things that would be useful, like, for example, thinking about the strategies, creative thinking, you know, innovation, and, and so on. So, so really, first of all, it's like managing your calendar. So your days pretty much don't look like this, that we are just going from one, one tool to another. And we are, you know, just trying to somehow survive days with the KPIs, OKRs, deadlines that we have on the, on the, uh, on the daily basis. So three techniques that might allocate or kind of might ease your time for you and uh, your, your time in your, in, your, um, in your calendar. The first one come, and, and probably many already heard the name Wilfredo Pareto, because the first one comes from the, you know, from the economists, uh, Wilfredo Pareto, who came up with this very famous rule, 80-20. And how he came up with this, he actually noticed, living in you know, Italy in the 18th century, that, uh, that we, uh, you know, when he was looking at his garden, he, he noticed that about 20% uh, of his uh, olive trees were 80% of the fruit. So basically they, they got like 80% of the uh, actual, actual olives come from only 20% of from the trees. And then again, he looked at the around, he, he noticed that for example, 80% um, of the land in Italy is owned by 20% of people of Italian. And then he actually saw, saw that this is something that can be applied in many, uh, many different areas. So basically 20% of your input uh, provides or creates 80% of the output, right? In other words, 20% 20 20 of your activities, uh, you know, result in 80% of the outcome. So value is created by 20%. Why this is important is because by allocating the time in your calendar, so again, going back to the previous quote, but allocating time for the exercise of actually defining which 20% of your activities generate the, generate the most of the outcome, you can actually start prioritizing and dropping everything else or uh, deprioritizing everything else, which is kind of like high effort by low, um, low output. So this is something very, it's a very good skill for, or, or the tool for also for working with the team. When you have teams running around saying that we are so busy, just really navigating where the value is created. So that's a number one tool that we are very often using, starting from leadership teams to actually hands-on team, execution team on different levels in different parts of the organization. Then another thing that we want to usually, uh, you know, uh, the other tool that we usually bring, which can be very strongly combined with the previous one, is so-called um, Eisenhower, Eisenhower matrix, right? So uh, former U.S. President uh, Dwight Eisenhower, he actually said that, you know, very wisely that very seldom uh, what is uh, what is um, what is very important is urgent, and what very, very often what is urgent is, is, um, is not so important. So kind of like combining this, especially nowadays, the, the fast space and, and this, this created urgency, you know, we really have to have the ca capability of filtering what is really important in the long term and what just gives impression of the importance, but actually it's not. So uh, it's a very good tool, again, which you can very clearly combine. And, and again, many of you probably know that it's, it's just like, again, for, for many of you, it's just like a reminder that, you know, if we divide tasks or you know things that are in our opinion urgent 
um, and then we have another which are not urgent, then we which which we have important but not important. We will be able to start mapping things, and then again there is a clear um, you know action point. What to do with the with the items in which of the in which of the quadrants here? So um, on the big picture, the summary I would like to say that you know for example learning and uh, you know developing the skills, especially the soft skills, it's definitely in the important but not urgent for us usually how we how we define of course it's very very important and crucial that we will allocate time but very rarely uh, you know people actually put it that it has to be done now because learning takes time and we don't have very often immediate feedback feedback on the progress of the learning but just um, you know uh, my kind of like kind of advice is that whatever uh, you know way of learning and upskilling you choose just put it on this uh, you know uh, things to be scheduled in your calendar and stick to this because again we have a lot of evidence that this is actually the best investment of your time and energy learning and all the time upskilling it's, it's actually something that helps you to stay relevant in the long term and of course, you can read, especially those who know that, you know what to do with the other parts of it, especially those urgent and not important. You can very easily delegate those tasks or declutter those ones who are not urgent or, or not important. And those who are, which are urgent and important, which actually probably is now most, take the most place in our calendar we just have to you know learn how to reduce and uh, reduce those and how we can delegate or how we can you know learn how to schedule this so that's a second a second kind of like tool that we are very often very often with combining with 80 20 this comes the next the next tool the third one you know the way to actually especially unlocking the time within the team so if you have a bigger team if you are running the team in marketing this is a very simple fr framework which we do in our organization which we help uh, organizations we work with to deploy but also for example big companies like google or, or um, uh, you know amazon uh, many pharma companies we work with are doing is, is this a framework of what to start what to stop and continue so i will highly and, and, and encourage you to allocate for example once per month uh, you know or at least once per quarter you know list of those uh, first of all activities that are being the most value so again remembering 80 20 so what are the having clarity which activities they actually they bring the most of the value how we can delegate them in the in the time so can we schedule can we can we delegate can we declutter can we uh, actually um reduce certain certain skills but then as a team actually what things we should stop immediately which 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 know which skills we don't have to at all continue with uh, where we can actually what we can start to improve what we can test what we can what we can uh, experiment with or what we can continue which works very very well so again those are the three frameworks and the reason I'm mentioning them because definitely you will unlock a lot of time with this. Um, this is a good tool for you and your teams to uh, unlock time for important things in your calendar. For example, learning, uh, learning, and and staying on top of your, you know, game and planning long long term your development. So this is the first the first area. Then when we think about really uh, learning and developing, you know, that there is no better way, especially learning on the job and upskilling as learning through experimentation. This is something we all the time talk about. We talk about the growth mindset. We talk about, you know, again, it is actually a process that you can learn, you can develop. Experimentation is so far the best way to learn what works and what doesn't work for your customers. Uh, so definitely companies like, again, like uh, known organizations like Amazon, uh, you know, we already, quoted that but you know companies like you know uh, meta google uh, png P, uh, Procter and gamble a, a lot of organizations that actually use experimentation all the time uh, because this is actually the best way to learn rapid experimentation fast experiments you know uh, again like just it's a process you can get and it, it's a system that you can develop uh, it requires a mindset of continuous learning and also the psychological safety in the organizations, knowing that as we learn, we might fail as well. So again, um, through skills like cooperation, collaboration, growth hacking, data analysis, again, they all come together. And uh, just to showing you, I'm just I'm just planning to show you that you know those skills are definitely relevant for many organizations, and there is a reason reason why, because they actually unlock growth. 
one uh, thing that I want to, you know, encourage you and maybe challenge you to do uh, is uh, this is an example from Skyscanner organization that is actually known uh, from for uh, you know really using experimentation and having amazing success story when, when it comes to growth through agile marketing and growth and uh, growth strategies. This is a manifesto which again, I'm not surprised that we have the right skills listed because when we think about this list, for example, at, at, at uh, Skyscanner, they definitely look at the validated learning uh, and they, they really look at the you know, collaboration, cooperation, being adaptive and so on. We can see that skills that we identified in the beginning, you know, they definitely uh, are visible in this kind of manifesto. So, you know, just an idea, uh, creating this kind of manifesto for your team, for your organization, or for yourself, individual, um, it, it might be quite useful, useful team uh, if we want to succeed and if we want to, uh, if we want to grow, um, uh, if we want to grow in this kind of like fast changing environment. Because you know, this is usually when we when we throw the names like Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and so on, it, it actually might sound easy, but there's a lot of work and a lot of strategies deployed in those organizations, in the teams, including exactly like learning and time for learning, which actually supported the growth of those of those companies. I just want to just very briefly about the growth strategies and the growth uh, uh, growth uh, processes. This is something that again many of you might know. This is something that we work very very closely um, with with different organizations. This is how you can actually deploy this kind of process of rapid experimentation, starting from hypothesis, then running experiments, then analyzing data, then learning from those. I always ask say I add here that you know this um, kind of like element between the learning and then again another hypothesis it's actually sharing the information within the organizations as key components of exactly learning uh, uh, creating a learning culture so so you know um, again uh, creating a learning culture through this kind of experimentation and knowing growth hacking processes uh, it is very useful again it's not very complex and there are many resources to go to to kind of like understand more this kind of process which i briefly now show and then another thing is that just very briefly showing uh, for for uh, for marketing teams you know it really depends on where you are uh, in your in your kind of like you know you probably know this pirate funnel where you are in the in the organizations what your focus are you know it can start from awareness to revenue historically marketing teams were expected maybe to more focus on the first two areas so really awareness and acquisition so really you know making sure that you know customers know about your brand and your organization you know visiting the platform visiting the website and then maybe like you know just really showcasing and, and seeing the the value uh, that you are presenting but nowadays it actually requires uh, you know marketing teams to really unlock growth in in all of those uh, elements of the funnel which again if we zoom in each of those elements requires different skills different tools uh, which again it, it's kind of like case to case uh, relevant for um my, my different for each team and um, again the, the 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 main principle here is that you know it's an ongoing learning and um, learning process and and you will have to assess what sk what skills are uh, kind of like relevant for your organizations and what you what you um, what you have already on your toolbox and what you have to learn. We as a as a team, we uh, as a great speaker, we of course we help with uh, with this kind of um, assessments. But again, there are a lot of tools which I showed in the beginning, and you can get later from me as well, which you can do it on your own. And then component that comes all the time now, especially in the past couple of months, the you know AI, and then how this actually is changing and sweeping the you know the the way of working that we developed in the past. Uh, past year because indeed actually you know the work will change and this is just an example that you know already when we talk about you know uh, you know reskilling one billion people this is already done before um, you know the development of the you know tools like chat p and so on so this is you know now even the speed is hard, the, the, the faster so definitely allocating time for understanding at least um, how utilizing the the, the, the skills of, of artificial intelligence is definitely a good uh, you know allocation of your time again every day they are new tools here is kind of like a, just a list of the tools that you can uh, understand and kind of like i definitely uh, would encourage you to go and visit and test those because again just to understand what tools you can use to work smarter not harder and to optimize your time and how you can what skills you can learn just 
navigating in those tools which are available which usually you know many of us uh, in marketing world we were you know we were you know asked to do those things and now it's very easy to outsource uh, outsource those tasks so just kind of like really um, understanding what tools they are and those are a couple of uh, examples here which we are also evaluating as i said that our training and learning you know learning um, uh, learning industry is, is developing very 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 um, you know actively right now so we are all the time looking at those tools evaluating again i'm very ha very happy to spar on those but this is for example the the AI copywriting uh, tool here it's for example another one and this is actually a quite quite amazing tool smart writer who can it's, it's quite advanced and it actually writes a writes a personalized emails to your customers so really really in in, in like a deep dive into different uh, different uh, uh, techniques even and and really supporting a lot of a lot of things again it can uh, it can you know uh, leave some extra space for us as a uh, you know in our daily work if we know how to operate and navigate among those tool, tools quite efficiently this is actually something uh, interesting our team were um, we were you know you know, we were a couple of weeks ago in South by uh, Southwest um, uh, conference, and and actually there was already the first presentation that you know was fully created using AI. So um, Strange Works was the first the first startup who actually used just fully outsourced creating the presentation, and I think they spent less than three hours for for creating the presentation. Anything from the content to the slides was created by. AI. So you can, we can see that you know even the events are changing. And so you, we could argue that in the past that was the that was the def kind of uh, domain of marketing, which is definitely absolutely uh, can be outsourced 100%. So again, uh, they are testing it, and uh, one of the skills is actually you know navigating there and trying new new tools, which I which I showed. So so definitely. Uh, you know, if we, we when we unlock the time for for learning, when we have the cl clear priorities, which we all the time have to, you know, all the time evaluate, as I mentioned. But when we already have a process in place for learning and for, you know, uh, learning through experiment experimentation, then a very important component is actually a teamwork and the right mindset. And um, Usually I even start with that as the as the first one, but here I just wanted to bring first like a concrete tools for you for you know um, um, you know prioritizing your task according accordingly and then showing the process for experimentation. But teamwork and mindset, I would I would actually argue that those are even more important than the previous one, because uh, when we think about you know um, you know what actually. You know, successful organizations when they, when they, when they, how they innovate. Um, you know, psychological safety is definitely number one component of the successful team. It's a very famous study which we are showcasing here. When a few years ago, already the teams at Google were asked, like, what is the, what is the secret for teams in, in, in at Google? And you know, we were really all the, the the people who did the the the, the research. They were expecting that you know, pretty you know um, you know usual suspects will be will be you know visible there. Like for example, the impact, the structure, clarity, and and for example the you know how the teams are organized. But actually, the number one result was psychological safety in the team, which was created again. Psychological um, safety mean in practice that team members they feel that they are it's okay to fail that it's okay that the failure failure is connected more with uh, you know learning and uh, you know it's okay to be vulnerable it's okay to be open so so definitely creating psychological safety in the team but also when you think about your skills development and learning to know that you know do you feel psychological safe in the organization definitely worth investing in uh, and um, uh, putting some attention because this really unlocks a lot of growth uh, personal growth but also in the organization by the way this is a good uh, book that i would definitely uh, recommend the fearless organization by professor emmy edmondson uh, so so exactly th there's a lot of good practice there and a lot of practicalities how to create the psycho psychological safe organization three tips here you know first of all like framing that we are actually on the learning journey and the truth is that we don't know what will work and what won't work for our customers you know so that's really important aspect of the 
or creating the psychological safety environment and also evaluate, do you have this right now in your team? Then also another one is like leading by example when it comes to, you know, mistakes, being open about it, but also like showcasing that this is something that we definitely can uh, can share as well both you know failures equally like with success, successes and the third one is is definitely be very curious about you know people like ask them for feedback i i always think that you know generous feedback constructive feedback is the best gift somebody can give you so always just be curious and ask about it and usually thank them for for feedback because this is really a good uh, a good um, uh, you know piece of information that instead of you know putting us down we should actually utilize for platform for becoming better because actually you know as adam grant um, said it pretty well that you know we can we know that we have a psychological safety in the organization if you can say i don't know i made mistake i totally disagree and so on so again like a very simple tool to evaluating if you have psychological safety or if you as a leader are creating the psychological safety again um, we as my speaker growth this is what we do we actually you know work with creating psychological safety within the teams so if you want to spark by ideas please reach out i'm very happy to help because the this is something that we do usually with our innovation workshops but the main idea is that let's not definitely create the organizations when we have this kind of structure when we kill the ideas it's more that you know if there's an idea we have a backlog backlog of ideas let's test and let's experiment first before we make any you know decisions so so that's really important for any kind of organizations and again i can definitely uh, see and, and already confirm that the most successful teams this is what they what they apply in the daily in the daily uh, operations another very important book uh, i think i talk about it all the time in all my presentation is uh, it's the book called mindset uh, by professor carol dweck uh, it, it is really basically showcasing that they are two types of mindset there is a growth mindset and the fixed mindset again it's something that we can develop we can develop growth mindset which basically means that we look at the failure as the opportunity to learn right that we believe that we have skills that can be developed that intelligence is something that we can develop that we can we can succeed by trying new things we, an opposite for example fixed mindset is the mindset that we basically look at the failure as the you know um, something that limits us that it's something that you know that we should be ashamed of you know we, we to be honest we should even celebrate failures because those are the best you know learnings uh, for for organizations to really um you know discovering what even doesn't work for the customers which is a good piece of information so again please uh, look at the the mindset growth mindset check if you have it you know combined with the psychological safety so first of all like working on the growth mindset for your teams that they have the right mindset but then creating the psychological safe uh, environment this is a really fundamental for giving a space to your team to yourself for growing the skills and developing the skills you you, you might need or you might want to develop and again uh, so this is something uh, just to just to summarize the skills uh, that we really uh, see as the uh, key components of successful marketing skills and where we actually see more concretely where companies are investing in so so this is what we do we actually have programs on each of those skills or combines with different different kind of like learning journeys but definitely something that you know if you don't have the certain skills um, uh, yet uh, mapped go to even free of charge tools online which i showed before uh, you can contact me to assess those different skills we can discuss we can spar um, use the tools that i gave you before to um, to really unlock time within your teams in your organizations and for yourself for assessing those skills and definitely allocate time for learning as this is this kind of if you remember important and um, and uh, kind of like maybe not the urgent but in the long term quite significant task um, you know uh, as as the, as the skill development so once again uh, think about the strategies uh, for those skills development prioritization unlocking time for critical thinking learning through experimentation uh, teamwork and the right mindset uh, by the way we will have open course uh, uh, about the growth strategy when we implement that uh, this is coming in may 25th but more importantly uh, you know, you have a QR code. I just really encourage you to go um, uh, to use that. You know, we are sharing on the bi-weekly uh, bi uh, basis 
the good strategies, the ideas, the books about book, different books, new books, articles about exactly learning new skills, growth mindset, psychological safety. So if you are interested, just like scan the QR sign up to get first of all the white paper, the whole report, but also uh, but also uh, feel free to reach out to me uh, and we can discuss more. So this was um, guys, this was 70 slides in uh, i would say 50 minutes uh, my apologies for the high speed but as i said it is quite fast out there uh, and i'm just more than happy to connect with you and to discuss more if you have any questions thank you maria excellent that was a very energetic and thorough presentation and fast paced uh, there was no chance to get bored uh, that's uh, good yeah. Yeah. If any member of the audience has any questions, we have a couple of minutes and you can write them to the questions panel. And I'll direct them to Maria. And obviously you can also contact Maria later on if there are any questions arising after the webinar. At this point, I would like to remind about our Marketing Finland Academy that is a very big uh, library of, of uh, base topics on marketing and communications. All kinds of webinar recordings can be found there. And if you don't have a license yet at your workplace, you can try it for free. So please visit our website and check that option out. It's very good and popular. And also, I would like to point out that uh, we are starting a new a uh, new version of the of the responsible marketing and communications certificate program uh, next autumn starting at 28th of september so if you're interested about that please check our website also out it's gonna be great we have done it twice before and it's developing to be even better and better are there going to be any questions? Mm -hmm. Just waiting. Um, if there were one top skill, Maria, that uh, stood out for you, what would that be? Considering uh, the service. Yeah, the one, the one, the one uh, skill that stood out for me. So yeah, actually, indeed, like a growth growth hacking is 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 quite it's quite significant. Uh, for for actually two reasons. First of all, that you know what it actually includes, because you know to succeed in the growth hacking, as I mentioned, it is actually a hard skill. Uh, I even showed you now the very simple process how to uh, run uh, you know the, this kind of like growth strategy experimentation. But it is in that sense, it is not so it's not so easy because it actually combines also the the right mindset, the psychological safety in your organization. Um, so it's 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 kind of like really fascinating how to roll the growth strategy within the organization. So you can start very simple. You can just start with deploying certain strategy and process helps because you can really run it through different teams and, and within the team. Uh, but again, if you want to really dive in and make it like really successful as a skill within your teams or for yourself, definitely more attention when it comes to the mindset, psychological safety. Uh, it, it, it's good to add there. So, so yeah, definitely growth hacking is is something that I I look at. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't think there's going to be any more questions now at this moment. But um, I thank you, Maria Kraczewska Olkona, so much for this lovely presentation. And uh, this one comment. Just a second. Um, oh, yeah, we have a question. Is it possible to get a link instead of the QR code? Absolutely. I will send it to everybody who has enrolled to this webinar later on. Right. And there's also a comment. Great to see, hear, and feel that marketing 2023 is far away from marketing of 2015. Thank you, Maria. Now you're more than welcome and please reach out. I am really fast, like I'm, I'm passionate about this topic. It's a fascinating topic. Uh, good luck to everyone who is attending. Good luck to all the people in marketing because it's really busy out there. Uh, but it's also a very fascinating journey. And 
yeah, I don't think it's going to be boring for any of us. So good luck and uh, hope to connect with you and then discuss more. Absolutely. Thanks for the audience and thanks again to you, Maria. Hope to see you soon as our webinar speaker. And Thank now, you so much. Have a lovely afternoon, everyone. Bye-bye.